Himalaya Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, this week we're chatting very simple swaps to transform and improve your health. Before we get started, it is important to say, if you like what you hear, we've got a very passionate team here at the podcast. Don't forget to rate and review anywhere that you can on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you can rate and review our podcast. Even if you don't like what you hear, pop it up and rate and review and let us know. For this week's episode, it is simple swaps to improve your health. People love these kind of top tips, simple swaps, simple changes episodes because they are exactly that. They're simple changes that work. There's no nonsense, there's no fads, they're just very straightforward and very simple based on 22 years of experience heading into 23 years of experience, which makes you feel very, very old all of a sudden at, four, at heading for 41 years of age. Um, they are based on experience over the years because the reality is these simple things do make a really big difference in terms of your health. Chances are around now people are looking at bigger goals, scary goals, scary things to do and it's all just hardcore and it's go hard or go home and they tend to be short term fixes. What we want here on Real Health and also my own perspective as a, as a PT and a wellness trainer is I wanted to improve your health for the long term to make changes to your health and changes to your, to your life that will last not just for a week, not just for a month but much, much longer than that. And that's where the simple component of it comes in. By making things simple and making things easy, chances are you can do it. That habit change that we're looking for over the course of 28 days, it's simple to do when those changes are easy. Chatting to James Clear years ago, that was one of his big things, that 1% rule, because it's easier for people to do. Big, scary goals are difficult. We're gonna chat about that a little bit later on. Let's get started. The first one is uh, on a carbohydrate level, swapping white for brown. Carbohydrates are really important. Do not cut them out. No matter what you do, they're crucial for energy, for fiber, for lots of other lovely things. But the color of that carbohydrate can be important. We want to go for wholemeal, whole grain, and they tend to be brown in terms of the color. So for example, a pasta uh, or bread or, or wraps or rolls, whole grain or wholemeal. And the easiest way to make that really simple is just on a color. Swap the color. So you're white for your brown. And by doing that, chances are, you're getting more fibrous and more nutritious quality carbohydrate than the white one. The white ones do have their role after sports, after marathons, prior to big long runs, recovery, all that kind of stuff. But general health, grains are really, really good. And the easy, the easy way to check for that is very simple. It's the weight of a bread or the weight of something. So if you take up a, a sliced pan, it's very, very light, try and squish it together. You can, it's like an accordion. And then if you get a, a really, th you know, a heavy brown bread or homemade brown bread, you can feel the weight difference in terms of the quality and the nutrients that are in it. And that's showing you the difference between the two. So white to brown carbohydrates, a very simple color change. If, you know, brown carbohydrates are things that you don't like, a half and half, okay, yeah, from a pasta perspective, it can be half brown pasta, half regular pasta, or from a bread perspective, one slice of each. Again, we're looking for that brown, full of nutrients, full of quality, full of really good things in terms of your carbohydrate source. So a very simple color switch to start with. The second tip, again, is around from a food perspective, is that it's that plate component. And we have chatted about that before, you know, by looking at your plate, how it's portioned off, how, how it looks, that is important. Chances are most people around the country will have half of their plate as a carbohydrate source. So a rice, a pasta, a potato, something like that, and it's half the plate or more. Um, the classic example is fish and chips. If we have fish and chips, how much chips is on the plate? Chances are it's the whole plate when the fish is placed on top. What we want to do with that is we want to keep those carbohydrates, we'll reduce the quantity of them. It should be a quarter of the plate. It should be the chips or the pasta or the rice or the potato source. So a quarter. And then as opposed to having half the plate with the carbohydrate source, have half the plate as a vegetable or a salad source. So again, you know, vitamins, minerals, all of that, really healthy. And it's, again, it's a simple thing to do. Just look at your plate. How are you portioning the plate off? How are you setting it up? Lying down the center, half is salad or veg. And that's what you're looking for. Very simple, very easy. The carbohydrates are still there. They're really important, but you're reducing the quantity of them because chances are you're probably eating too many. And that's a really simple way just to switch it up. That doesn't really take a whole amount of effort and it's very, very easy to do. Swap number three is this one. It's that, that big goal to small goal concept. So 
We all do it over the course of Christmas. We think about these things. We set up our goals for the year. And we're not going to go down the, the resolutions kind of route this year uh, on the show, I don't think. We're going to bring you episodes with people and with, with lots of other interesting stuff. But we're not going to do that new year, new you. Because chances are people have done that. Uh, and they're big, scary goals. They're big life changes. They're big. They're monumental. They're difficult to achieve. They're hard to attain. And chances are because they're so difficult to achieve and difficult to attain that on your own it's very very hard to hit those targets two three four weeks in chances are you may fall off the wagon and then you feel guilty for not achieving them so what we ask you to do is very simple have a couple of small goals each week so a small goal can be anything from if it's weight loss losing a pound if it is walking to work if it is you know eating within a 12-hour window whatever it may be that small goal when you achieve it builds momentum over the course of time and that momentum builds and builds and builds. So we know that small goals are easier to achieve, you're more likely to achieve them and by doing that, you're more likely to stay healthy and to stay well. One of the big lessons there is though, it's consistently setting targets and consistently setting goals. So for my own perspective, every month I sit down, I map it out, I have a monthly plan in terms of the goals that I would like to hit and each month I set them and work towards them. So that goal setting approach is really important. And the fun bit of that is the, re- the reward bit, obviously. Setting a goal, achieving it, hitting it, and then rewarding yourself is you know a really nice pattern and a habit to get into. We know habits are important. And we look at habits from a food perspective or a mental health perspective, but from a wellness perspective, those habits take 28 days to do. And that goal setting habit is a really easy one to get into, four week block, break it down week by week, reward yourself when you hit it, and then sit down and set your next batch of goals. But make them small, tangible, achievable. And if you really are dead set on a big scary goal, break it down. So the marathon is a classic example of that. We train people all year round for marathons. How do we do it? It's a 16 week build, so it's a 16 week plan. We build you up from from zero to 26.2 miles over the course of 16 weeks. And the beauty of that is that it seems far more achievable doing your three or your four runs each week, tick the box for each one, and after 16 of those, you run a marathon. Easy. But when you think of the marathon on its, on its own right, it's kind of scary. So if you are going to do a big scary goal, break it down week by week, month by month, almost day by day, and it makes it much more kind of achievable and doable. But we know from experience, big scary goals for weight loss, they just, they're just very, very difficult to do. Make it small, make it tangible, and then make it achievable. Next one up is, I think you'll like this one, Uh, and it's one that we as a company and a business have have stuck to for years for our clients and also in terms of how we eat myself, which is that we swap diet foods for real food. I don't know about you, but chances are you don't particularly like the taste of diet foods, whether it's diet yogurt or diet mayonnaise or uh, one of the butter substitutes or anything like that. They just don't taste as nice. They're sweeter. They're kind of more, they're they're more sugary for want of a better word. They don't taste as good. Well, this year, swap them for real food. Eat like we used to eat. So if you're gonna have butter, have really, really, really good quality butter. If you're gonna have uh, a yogurt, have the best yogurt that money can buy. If you're gonna have a takeaway, have a real, don't bother with a fake away. Fake aways are irrelevant. Just enjoy a takeaway, but have the best quality takeaway that you possibly can. Going down the diet route in terms of bars, in terms of products, anything like that, again, you're suffering and there's no need to do it. What we want you to do is be healthy and be well. Real food is better quality. That's the reality of it. It's less processed. It's got less substitutes in it. It tastes better. It's nicer and it's just more enjoyable. So this year, that's one of the things we want you to do. Just any diet products, swap them over for the real version. So if it's mayonnaise, have real mayonnaise. Just have less of it. Uh, So the quality is important, but the quantity is important too. Ditch the diet products. And especially, you know, we've said this year on year on year on year. There are different diets out all the time. The liquid diet is kind of starting to make a comeback. Don't bother uh, going on three shakes a day on a very low calorie diet just is not going to work. Just eat healthy, eat real, eat normally. And just eat the food that you like to eat because that's what life is about. It's too short not to do that. And that's absolutely crucial. So from the diet foods to the real food is really, really important. Along those lines, it's another food one. It kind of ties in with that one. And this is a slightly controversial one, the fact that everywhere you look on Instagram, everywhere you look on social media, it's calorie counting, calories in, calories out, calories in, calories out, and that's how you lose weight, or that's how you get healthy. Well, I'm going to say 
in many respects, well, for most people, the standard person doesn't really need a calorie count. Chances are you know what's good and what's not good. You know what's healthy and what's not healthy. The moderation component is absolutely key. So the swap here is, I would say, swap calorie counting just for food tracking. So just track your food, get a notepad, write it down. Because by writing it down, you're accountable. Send it to somebody that you're super accountable. But by writing it down, you're accountable in terms of your food, even to yourself. You automatically self-correct. Because when it's written down, you look at it, you know what's healthy and not so healthy. And you know the moderation component of it too. So by writing it down, you're more likely to stay on track. You're more likely to stay healthier and eat healthier because it's accountable. You can see it. You can review it. And it's a really important way to get away from that calorie counting because it becomes obsessive, it becomes difficult, it becomes somewhat over the top for a lot of people. And also it takes time. My angle on wellness would be that, you know, if you can't do it for the long term, if you can't do it for the rest of your life, well then don't. And for a lot of people, calorie counting is something that they will do in the short term, but won't do for, for the long term. So just switch to a food diary, just write it down. Forget about all the numbers, but write it down. That moderation component is key between what's healthy and what's not. It is important that there is no good food or bad food. There's just food and enjoy it uh, because we all know, you know, that a takeaway every single night is not particularly healthy for us. But once a week or once every two weeks, it's absolutely fine. And that is important. Folks, you are listening to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. As ever, if you have any questions, you know, we are Real Health at independent.e at Carl Henry PT on Instagram. And you can ask any questions there that you want. We're going to keep going with our simple swaps. So we've looked at lots of food ones. Let's have a look at some exercise ones. And this is one of my favorites, which is that it's that that sense of go hard or go, or go home. Switch that and swap that to moderation. So it doesn't ha exercise doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be, you know, really sore all the time or really out of breath. If you're going to a new class and, and you're, you're, you can't walk for four or five days afterwards, there's no fun there. There's no benefit there. There's the trainer who's getting off on the fact that their, their ego is so big that they're gonna push you to, to, being a, to breaking point every time you come in the door. That's irrelevant. They're going to scream and shout at you so that you can't to push you to do more and more and more when you will be in bits for a week. Let's moderate that. Let's just do exercise and enjoy it. Exercise should be challenging but enjoyable, and that is important. On a rep or on a set of reps, it should be the last two reps should be difficult, pretty much there or thereabouts, and that's the sweet spot that you hit in terms of how much weight you lift or how much uh, repetitions that you do. The last two should be challenging. If you you know. The, the go hard or go home concept increases injury profile, reduces the enjoyment profile, unless you're one of those people, and there's lots of people out there who just really enjoy, you know, hard, intense exercise. That's great, but chances are you're in the percentile of the population who move and do it anyway. 70% of people in the country who need to get moving and improve their, their quality of their health and the quality of their life. They don't like that. They don't like uh, pushing themselves to the limits. They're kind of nervous of it, so we don't have to. So remember that now that if you do go to an exercise class, moderate that intensity, work hard, get it, you know, but not too hard. The last two reps, that's where it should be tough. You should be a little bit tender afterwards, but you shouldn't be tender for a week, one or two days maximum, and then into the recovery. And as you get fitter and stronger, you recover quicker. But that sense of just pushing yourself, for most of the population, it just doesn't achieve it. The government RDAs are, are, are 180 minutes a week of moderate intensity exercise. So do you get three hours a week of movement that's moderate intensity, where you're getting somewhat out of breath or slightly out of breath? Chances are you don't. Well, we need you to do more of that because we want you to age better, to feel better, to be stronger, to have better bones, to have better mood, to have all these things that come with just that movement profile of 180 minutes per week of moderate intensity exercise. Children, just so you know, are double. Uh, that recommendation. They're meant to get an hour a day, pretty much, of of, of in rigorous active movement. But think about it. Do you get do you get three hours? Let's use that as a target. Use that as a goal. Moderate intensity is the magic word, and that's the big swap. It's not going too hard. It's not pushing too far. It's just it's just moderate. So it's challenging, but it's cool, and therefore it's enjoyable, and therefore you're more likely to do it in the long term, which is really really important. Tying in with that, I want you to swap all the cardio work for some cardio work and some resistance training. If you've listened to the show before, and we hope that you have, we're always banging on about the fact that we need to lift more weights. We interview people from universities all around the world and authors from all around the world who tell us that we need to lift more weights. Yet as a population, we don't. One in 10 people generally uh, will do some form of weight bearing exercise. One in 10. Yet, 
it is the form of exercise that will deliver the most benefits to you and your health. You want to live longer? Resistance exercise or weight-bearing exercise. You want to have better, better bones and stronger bones? Weight-bearing exercise. More energy? Weight-bearing exercise. Better hormone balance for menopause? Weight-bearing exercise. There's nothing it cannot deliver, yet we don't do it. So I want you to promise, I want you to make that one swap, which is that, you know, you're going to have one session a week or 20 minutes a week or whatever. It could be 10 press-ups a day and 10 squats a day. I don't really care. Whatever it is, swap to doing some resistance training. So all the cardio work to mostly cardio now and some resistance training or some weight-bearing movement. And remember, we are all weights. You know, that's, I'm, what am I, 86 to 88 kilos, depending. That where I'm a weight. If I stand and drop my bum to the floor, that's a squat. If I do a press-up or a plank, they're all weight-bearing movements. A lunge or genuflecting, that's a weight-bearing movement. Anything lifting a weight is weight-bearing. So it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. The key thing is you're just lifting your weight. Simple. And the more that you do, the healthier you're going to be, the healthier you're going to age. And remember, age is, you know, and we've done an F on it before, age is, is, is a number. Your actual age and your body age are two very different things. So you could be 60 with a body age of 80, if you're very uh, sedentary and sitting on your bum all day long. You could be 60 with a body age of 50, if you're active and doing weight-bearing movement. So the question you have to think about is, what do you, how do you want to age? How does the quality of your aging look? And the ball's in your court, it's your responsibility, it's your, you have to take the action. And the reality is the more movement you do, the healthier you will age, but the more resistance training in particular that you do, the healthier you're going to age. It's simple. It's a simple swap, but it delivers absolutely huge results. Next one's controversial, uh, but it's very important, which is uh, swapping that lion, that the big lion that you have at the weekend to be, maybe an hour extra in bed, there or thereabouts. Why is that important for your health? Why is it a simple health swap? Simple. Uh, our circadian rhythms, our sleep routines are absolutely crucial to our health. Getting proper sleep is crucial to our health. If you have, you know, two, three, four hour lie-in at the weekend, so say you normally go up at seven and you go up at 10 or 11, you're throwing your rhythm, your sleep rhythm uh, and your sleep clock out of sync. And that's a problem because then you'll struggle to sleep the following night and then you get a Sunday night fear and then you struggle to sleep that night and then you're starting the week on a bad note. So allowing the sleep in to kind of maximize to about an hour keeps you pretty much within your sleep cycle, your body clock, and that's where you want it. Remember, sleep is that component of recovery, of, of wellness that no one really talks about. But it is, it's crucial. And your sleep setup from your pillow to your mattress to all of that is absolutely crucial too. The better your sleep, the better your wellness. The better you recover, the better you work, the better you feel, the better you lose weight, the better everything. It is absolutely uh, crucial for your overall health. So make that swap. And it's a controversial swap, but it's a very important one which is one hour lie-in max over the course of the next couple of weeks. And just watch how that changes. Watch how you feel. The improvement in it is absolutely huge. And you will feel all the better for it. Other swaps that I have, this one is a nice one, which is that it's the batch cooking one, which we've seen loads of in the last couple of years. People spending half their Sunday batch cooking. I don't know about you, but I just don't have time for that. I just don't have the, the time or the energy. So uh, in terms of getting around that, the simple way to do it is to add the extra portion as you cook. Very simple. If you're cooking for two, cook for four and store two of those portions. So it gets you away from spending hours and hours cooking over a weekend. Just add an extra portion or two portions, put them in the fridge, and then that builds up your, your stock of food really, really quickly. My final tip is one that I come back to time and time again because I have to, because it's really important, because we just don't do it enough. And that is sitting to standing. It ties in with the overall health component of what we're looking to do to age healthier, to live healthier. And I come back to it and mention it all the time because I just look around and I watch people sit all day long and then they wonder why they have back pain and knee pain and, and, and their posture is just improving and their core is weakening. If you want a simple swap that will do multiple benefits, standing more is the way to go. Just stand as much as you can over the course of the day. The more you stand, the healthier you're going to be. I hope you've had your pen and paper over the course of the last 20 minutes. They're simple. You can listen back if you haven't. You know where we are. It's realhealth and independent.ie at Carl Henry PT on Instagram. And that is it for another episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. As ever, if you have any guest suggestions or anything you would like to hear on the show, do let us know on Instagram or on the email address. And we'll do our very best to get those guests in or cover those topics for you. Don't forget to rate and review. Try those simple swaps this week. I want to see 
the sleep improving, the standing improving, and absolutely everything else. And we'll see you next week for more real help. It's long ago. Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.